Hello everyone, I am back with another vlog, this time for It Follows. Another horror movie, and I admit I am a bit late to the party on this one, but this had some really good reviews from the critics, and surprisingly, in spite of the good reviews, doesn't appear to have been doing all that well uh, financially. I mean, it's well enough to make a profit thanks to its low budget, but not making huge amounts of money. So I figured, let's check this one out and see if it actually lives up to the hype. Unlike the movie I reviewed last time. Yeah, Unfriended did not do it for me, in spite of some mostly positive reviews from the critics. It follows, however, this was really good. I like this one. So as you may know, there's kind of a trope with horror movies that sex equals death. Anyone who has sex in a horror movie, you're gonna die. It's always the virgins that survive. That's the trope. It Follows takes a very literal approach to that trope. Basically, in this movie, there is someone who is cursed. And while that person has this curse, there is this entity, demon, whatever you want to call it, they never really specify, that follows that person very slowly. I don't know why it moves so slow, if it's incapable of moving fast, or if it just prefers to stalk its victims at a leisurely pace. Perhaps it's paid by the hour, I don't know, but it moves very slowly, and if you let it catch you, it will fuck your shit up. It may not be fast, but it is incredibly strong and nigh indestructible, and it will not stop until you are dead. And the only way to get rid of the curse is to have sex with someone, and then the curse passes on to them. This is the strangest metaphor for an STD I have ever seen. And this demon or whatever takes on various forms. Sometimes it appears as a man, sometimes as a woman, sometimes an old person, sometimes a kid, sometimes as someone naked, because of course it does. And only the person who is currently cursed or people who have previously been cursed can actually see the demon. To everyone else, it's invisible. And if the person with the curse is killed, then it just reverts back to the previous person and so on and so forth until... Well, who knows, really. So not only does this movie have a pretty interesting premise, it's also a pretty good callback to, like, the old-school horror movies of the 1980s. There's definitely a very 80s feel going on. It relies on setting a very creepy tone rather than just relying on jump scares. Although it does have one or two of those, but they're not terribly offensive. The way it's filmed feels very old school, and even the soundtrack has a very 80s vibe to it, with a little bit of modern electronic music thrown in as well. And if you are the paranoid sort, maybe you might want to give this one a pass, because it will not help you in that regard. Anytime you see someone that even appears to be following you, you will second guess that person, no matter what. I thought the cast did a pretty good job. Uh, Micah Monroe in particular, who plays the main character Jay, was pretty good, and... Kind of reminded me a bit of Patricia Arquette, circa Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Uh, another old-school element to the film, I suppose. And I did like how they made the demon slow. It actually added to the fear factor a bit. And this is a pretty good example of how to slow things down to a positive effect, unlike Unfriended, which just randomly slowed shit down for the sake of slowing it down. This is how you pace a horror movie properly. My only real gripe with the movie is how it ends. Eventually, they do at least get a general idea of what's going on with Jay and what's coming after her, and there are a few times when they try to kill it. And of course, they fail. So with that in mind, I'm not really sure how their final plan to stop the demon was supposed to work. Without getting into spoilers, just... I, I really don't get how they thought this would work, or maybe they weren't sure if it would work and just figured, well, we got to try something because we can't keep running forever. I don't know. And then after the final confrontation, which may or may not have gone well, the movie just kind of stops. It doesn't really have much of an ending. It's just after the final battle, it's like, well, we're done here. No, there's no real wrap up. It just stops. It almost seems like David Robert Mitchell, who wrote and directed the film, kinda wrote himself into a corner. Had a really great setup, but then couldn't figure out how to wrap it up. 
And while there's no obvious sequel bait, the potential for a sequel is definitely there. And perhaps if they do make a sequel, they could go into more details about the curse, like how exactly it works, what the hell is this thing that's chasing these people, and where did the curse start? Because presumably it had to start somewhere. If you're an old school horror fan, I can definitely give this a recommendation. So if it's still playing in your area, go give it a watch. This movie definitely could use some more money. It hasn't made that much. I mean, it's still making a profit, but it deserves more. And that's it for It Follows. So until next time, take care.